with all the ransomware attacks that we have seen on big enterprises and all the vulnerabilities and how can we prevent our home networks from being for getting compromised in similar ways how can we prevent uh, bad countries and when i say a bad country i i meant in this conversation a country that harbors that protect bad guys hackers that you know do all these mischiefs so i'm not making this statement of the people that live in the country uh, so how do, do, can we protect uh, against bad countries uh, scanning our networks as i have shown in all the videos that they constantly do or, or you know exploit after doing that exploit any open port and to do any mischief so that's what this video is all about and it's part of a series of videos i will be adding this one in here to the uh, open source pfsense series uh, this is of pfsense with uh, the free curator and this shows you how you can segment your network at home have iot devices as i'm showing here uh, and you label them insecure like your cameras and all the devices and then have another wi-fi where your secure devices are and, and that pdf is available the link for that PDF is on a public box folder which is in the video description of all these and all my videos so you can get that one there now and, and you see why I'm making such a long introduction of this because this is uh, a little delicate to implement and it can be uh, a placebo if you don't do it right you may be thinking that you are protected when you are not so first let's talk about why is this uh, important any browser and any router and I'm not talking about when those things are bypassed because of vulnerabilities on those devices which by the way PFSense seems to be doing a better job than anybody else in uh, preventing those or either when they find and block them but I have not even seen them in the news as I have seen all the brands of routers anyway so any one of those devices by default they block unsolicited traffic what does that mean well that unless i click on a browser to go into a bad country which i mean the browser is on a server that resides in a, in a bad country uh, then no traffic should be allowed to come back okay and that's that's been standard well there's an exception though if you have open port on your router and and that depends on your setup if you have a gaming device that requires to open a port for your kids to play i mean there are multiple things or or an iot that you know but, but nevertheless that's that is the reality but what if what you want to be better protected if, if you comply with this statement if you like to pursue this it says i do not want any traffic at all going to bad countries okay a and that might be something at least i feel that way even on ports i may have open I really want to be, you know, belts and, and suspenders type of security. This video is for you. We're going to be talking on how you implement that on your PFSense with a application or a service or an add-on to PFSense. And by the way, everything I'm showing in here is free. You don't have to pay a penny. You can implement PFSense on an old PC with two network cards. There's a video on it. But, uh, so, you, Or you can buy one from the people of NetGate. We have no affiliation with them whatsoever. But, but this service, which you can freely add to your PFSense, basically what they do is they implement a trick. They create firewall rules, but they use aliases. And why that is important? Well, uh, you see, if I want to block a bad country, okay, 
from on this approach well that bad country has a ton of IP addresses okay uh, very many and you'll see to the f subsequent parts of the video how many those are that this is not a big problem so what this technology implements is basically an alias for that country that has all the addresses that that country has assigned they even have aliases for continents so let's say that i don't want to do any business with uh, continent x y and c well there are aliases for that and those are massive so you don't want to put you know literally thousands of firewall rules on your pfsense router to block every one of those ip addresses because first of all you don't know them and, and even if you know them it will be too intense of a task to do so so this aliases and this pfsense block and ng allows you to say well i want to block all traffic coming from that country boom that those firewall rules are put on the top and get added but now there is a problem how do i know which IP addresses belong to a country. It used to be that countries were assigned different IP addresses, but then came cloud services running out of IPv4 addresses. And, you know, for example, Microsoft might be, which was, you know, enter, and even Amazon does that. They buy as many IPv4 addresses as they can get. And they might be from a country that is not using it and is trying to get some money out of it. Well, for that, there is. A database called MaxMind, which by the way Curator also uses, and I did a video that shows how you should keep yours updated in order to know when you hover on an IP on, on the Curator console from which country that is. So that MaxMind uh, is with uh, works in combination with PS Broker in G, so to know that well this particular set of IP addresses, these CDAR ranges, and this is a separate video that explains CDAR ranges in detail. Uh, belong doesn't does not belong to country X but actually it's, it's part of the AWS services in the US uh, so so that is actually very very nice now so there is an implication on performance because wouldn't be nice to say well you know what I don't do any business with Antarctica let me block everything on Antarctica and other people may say, well, I live in Asia. I don't want anything to do with uh, South America or, or, the, or the U.S. or whatever. Well, the problem is that the performance hit that you will put your box into it uh, might be too much. That might be, I mean, if for every, you know, IP traffic that, that comes, you're going to be evaluating gazillions of rules with multiple entries due to the aliases uh, that is impractical you cannot work block the world that's the way that the internet was designed and there's not much we can do about it so you need to be granular on, on this and also it is very important that before you embark into this you you, you take a quiet time on your home network and run a, a, a an internet test and make sure that the performance, and I did a video on that, on upgrading uh, my network at home. You make a test by connecting your device here and see how much traffic you can put through. And then you do it here and that should be the same. That means that your router is not slowing you down by any means. Because you may want to rerun that test after you are done with this series. Uh, and implementing PFSense, PF's uh, blocker NG to make sure that you are not overtaxing your your router. And, and you'll see when you deploy this that your router will warn you. They, they have, they, you can be hitting not just CPU limits but also memory limits and, and stuff. So um, it's not bad to have that test to make sure that you know where you are. Also, what we will be doing is, you, I'll show you how that's the way I set mine up, is that I will be blocking incoming and outgoing traffic. If, if it's a country that I deem bad, that I don't do business with, and I know that they are doing mischief, I want to block everything, even when a camera of mine or a computer, or I don't know that this device is opening a page in a country that is 
uh, hosted in that bad country, I, I, I may not know that. So even on those cases, your browser will not load, the communication will not load. And this is just for, not just for browser, this is for any port, any traffic. I want nothing to do with those. That's what I want. But as I mentioned before, uh, there's a caveat. I find this setup, after I, I learn on it, very non-intuitive. And you may get the placebo effect that you think that you have done it well and you feel protected and <laughs> you are not. So I'll show you uh, how I did the test and I learned a lot about it and I actually consulted with my good friend and networking guru uh, uh, Leopoldo Aguirre, also known as Polo, and he sh explained to me the things that are happening and the way that the rules are evaluated and all that. Uh, another thing that I learned is that if you use a VPN for getting some anonymity on the things that you do, then this stuff is not going to work because of the tunnel that you make on the VPN. Okay, excuse the long introduction, uh, but this is what we're going to be doing in the subsequent series, uh, videos of this series.